this is docker repository separate docker repository it is a download.docker.com linux centos and docker repo so this dnf config ma config manager will create this repository under etcm.repos.d then we are installing this docker ce this is a container d package we are installing first and interestingly in container d if you look at we are using centos 7 that's correct we are installing container d from centos 7 repository and docker ce from docker and another important option to watch here is no best because uh, if you don't specify no best it will say that uh, latest version of container uh, d is available and when you install that it will become you know incompatible so uh, it is a kind of locking deadlock situation so to overcome this we install previous version of container d and we install docker c for this to install container because we have to practice something on kubernetes also so one node cluster we will be deploying for that we need this connection track tools so first enable and start docker after that you use this modify this user and add this group oh come on there's a typo in there's a typo yeah and similarly you should do this for oracle user also su hyphen oracle because you need to add oracle group also to this docker group this one so docker is running docker is working fine for this is like if you type docker info the c group file system control group here c group driver control group driver is c group fs it should be system d if it is control group uh, c group fs it will not work and we need to uh, let me restart the docker and tell you uh, restart and then if i check this then it will be changed to system d so what i have done is uh, the control group driver needs to be system d and that is prerequisite for kubernetes otherwise you will get warnings so when you change this control group driver from c group fs c group file system control group file system to system d then this warning will not be thrown Kubernetes will work fine so that uh, my kernel can do packet forwarding to containers that uh, mode probe means insert the module kernel module bridge net filter pass the value one to this file proc sys net bridge bridge net filter call IP tables these are all mandatory requirement for Kubernetes otherwise that also a problem so in etc container dconfig.tml you need to disable the default first line I'm commenting it out and I'm inserting a, a new line here which will oh, I'm inserting these two lines here plugin IO container D and GRPS and CRI this system D control group is true because I changed the control group to system D to work with Kubernetes restart container D interface we are adding the interface docker to our uh, trusted zone permanently what is the purpose purpose is the container which are running to uh, inside uh, kubernetes or directly they may need to install some softwares they need to access internet so that will go through docker interface so we are making it trustworthy we are uh, in, uh, ensuring it that it pass through the firewall these are all ip tables firewall rules zone is public so this will firewall cmd zone trusted add masquerade permanently and now i can reload I'm just downloading the latest version which is 2.3.3 and putting into user bin docker compose so once this file is downloaded I will change the permission and I'll make it executable ch mode a plus x and this path this is a single binary executable and now I can use docker hyphen compose hyphen hyphen help to check yeah it's working fine so docker and docker compose are our prerequisites for coming up lab where, where because we'll be doing some container monitoring system also c advisor container advisor we'll be installing that we'll be deploying some container working with some containers we'll be monitoring them and we'll also be monitoring kubernetes session 4 prometheus internals this session covers prometheus storage prometheus security tls and authentication on prometheus server prometheus storage Prometheus include a local on-disk time series database. 
but also optionally integrate with remote storage systems the local storage Prometheus local time series database stores time series data in a custom format on the disk ingested samples are grouped into blocks of two hours each two hour block consists of a directory containing one or more chunk files that contain all time series samples for that window of time so on disk layout also consists of metadata file and index file which indexes metric names and labels to time series in the chunk files when series are deleted via the api deletion records are stored in separate tombstone files tombstone file instead of deleting the data immediately from the chunk files the block for currently incoming samples is kept in memory and is not fully persisted yet it is secured against crashes by a write ahead log the way we have it in databases that can be replayed when the prometheus server restarts after a crash write ahead log files are stored in wall directory in 128 mb segments these files contain raw data that has not been compared compacted yet so they are significantly larger than the regular block files prometheus will keep a minimum of 3 write ahead log files however maybe more than 3 write ahead log files since it needs to keep at least 2 hours of uh, worth of raw data from the monitored matrix the directory structure of prometheus servers data directory is like this under data you will have this directories meta dot json file chunks which i was talking about tombstones index and meta dot json so uh, these are the data we have and this is the right ahead log files wall directory limitation of local storage is it is not clustered or replicated so if the system is crashed the data is gone not arbitrarily scalable or durable in the face of disk or node outage and should be treated as you would any other kind of single node database you can use raid for the disk availability snapshots for backups capacity planning etc which is recommended for improved durability with proper storage durability and planning storing years of data in the local storage is possible so what is recommended is you use external storage external storage may be used via remote read write apis the link is given for your reference careful evaluation is required for these systems as they vary greatly in durability performance and efficiency compaction the initial 2 hours blocks are eventually compacted into longer blocks in the background compaction will create larger block up to 10% of retention time or 31 days whichever is smaller operational assets uh, operational aspects prometheus has several flags that allow configuration configuring the local storage the most important ones are storage t 
TSDB path defaults to slash data storage TSDB these are all we specify in the Prometheus configuration file retention time default is 15 days so you can change more retention size determine the maximum number uh, number of bytes that the storage blocks can use the oldest data will be removed first default is zero or which is disabled all these are can be set in the configuration file that is system script which we have used then storage tsdb wall compression this flag enables compression for the right ahead log depending on your data you can expect a wall size to be halved with little extra cpu load capacity of a prometheus server on average prometheus use only around one to two byte per sample therefore to plan the capacity of a prometheus server you can use this rough formula needed disk space equal to retention time in seconds multiplied by ingested sample size a sample per second multiplied by bytes per sample remote storage integrations you can use adapters to data store the data persistently permanently on remote location like third party s3 bucket or object storage using the custom protocol using between adapter and the third party the adapter will be the end point for prometheus so prometheus will write samples to adapter it will read the samples from the adapter so request matches plus uh, time ranges uh, will receive series and the samples from the adapter which adapter will connect to the third party prometheus out of box does not connect does not support remote storage Prometheus integrations integrates with remote storage system in two ways. One is Prometheus can write sample that it ingest to a remote URL in a standardized format. And second is Prometheus can read block sample data from a remote URL in a standardized format. This standardized format has to be given by provided by some adapter. Existing integrations. The read and write protocol both use a snappy compressed protocol buffer encoding over HTTP the protocols are not considered as stable APIs yet a standard API yet and may change to use G RPC over HTTP version 2 in future when all hops between Prometheus and the remote storage can safely be assumed to support HTTP version 2 Existing integrations are a lot of available like you can learn more about existing integration with remote storage refer to this integration documentation Prometheus security Prometheus is maintained by volunteers not by a company. So there is no service level agreement you can expect Therefore fixing security issue is done on best effort basis It is presumed that untrusted users have access to the Prometheus HTTP endpoint and logs they have access to all time series information contained in the database plus a variety of operational and debugging information. It is also presumed that only trusted users have the ability to change the command line, configuration file, rules file and other aspects of the runtime environment of Prometheus and other components. Which targets Prometheus scraps, how often it scraps and with what other settings all these are determined entirely via the configuration file the administrator may decide to use information from service discovery systems which combined with relabeling may grant some of its control to anyone who can modify the data in that service discovery system scrapped targets may be run by untrusted users so therefore it should not only be by default be possible for target to expose data that uh, impersonates a different target the honor label options remove this protection and can cut uh, you know can uh, certain re uh, as can uh, certain relabeling setups as of prometheus 2 web enabled admin api flag control access to the administrative http api which include functionalities such as a deleting time series this is disabled by default if enabled administrative and 
mutating functionality will be accessible under the slash API slash star admin paths. The web enable lifecycle flag control HTTP loads and shutdowns of Prometheus. This is also disabled by default. If enabled, they will be accessible under uh, this reload and quit paths. Alert manager security. Any user with access to alert manager HTTP endpoint has access to its data. They can create and resolve alerts. They can create, modify and delete silences. Where notifications are sent to is determined by the configuration file with certain templating setup if it is possible for notification to end up at the, an alert definite defined destination. For example, if notifications use an alert label as the destination email address, anyone who can send alerts to the alert manager can send a notification to any email address. If the alert defined destination is a templatable secret field, anyone with access to either Prometheus or alert manager will be able to view those secrets. Authorization, authentication and encryption. In future, server side TLS support will be rolled out to Prometheus projects. Those projects include Prometheus alert manager, push gateway and the official exporters. Authentication of clients by TLS client certification will also be supported. The Go projects will share the same TLS library which will be based on the Go Vanilla Crypto TLS library. Default is TLS 1.2. Policy regarding this is based on Qualys SSL Labs to achieve a grade A with a default configuration and correctly provided certificates while sticking as closely as possible to the upstream Go defaults. TLS support. TLS will be added to Java exporters in future. If you have a special TLS needs like a different Cipher suit or older TLS version, you can tune the minimum TLS version and the Cipher as long as the Cipher is not marked as insecure in the crypto library. If that still does not suit you, the current TLS settings enable you to build a secure tunnel between the servers and the reverse proxies with more special requirements. TLS HTTP basic authentication will also be supported, not as of now. Basic authentication can be used without TLS, but it will then expose username and password in clear text over the network. Definitely not secure. On the server side, basic authentication passwords are stored as hashes with bcrypt encryption algorithm. So it is your responsibility to pick the number of rounds that matches your security standards. More rounds make brute force more complicated at the cost of more CPU power and more time to authenticate the request. Security of the API. As administrator and mutating endpoints are intended to be accessed via simple tools such as curl, there is no built-in cross-site scripting, uh, this sorry, CSRF uh, protection as that would break such a use case. Accordingly, when using a reverse proxy, you may wish to block such paths to prevent a CSRF. For non-mutating endpoints, you may wish to set course headers given in the link, such as access control allow origin in your reverse proxy to prevent cross-site scripting attacks. You can also prevent injection attacks. If you are composing from Prometheus query language, queries that include input from untrusted users who are not meant to be able to run arbitrary Prometheus, uh, Prometheus query language queries, make sure any untrusted input is appropriately escaped to prevent the injection attacks. For example, you can use up job equal to user input should become, uh, you should know that it will become job equal to this value blank. So that, that can be changed. Some metric, if this user input was all these are you need to take care of this uh, and some metric. That's all for this internals of Prometheus. Thank you very much.